Sci-fi writer Arthur C. Clarke once said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. That quote pretty much sums up my thoughts on Epic's metahuman real-time facial animation demo. Come on, let's go. Facial capture in video games hasn't always been this easy. Before developers had the option to capture an actor's performance with an iPhone and a decent PC, it required a ton of space and specialized gear. You know the gear I'm talking about. The suits with the sensors and those headsets with cameras that track the dots on actors' faces. The point is, it's actually quite expensive. You know those behind the scenes videos of actors wearing funny suits covered in sensors while they act out a game? That's all about to change. Let's take a look at how the intersection of technology and art have changed the way productions look at facial capture and how some game developers have gone from needing millions of dollars a month in labor to create this to now only needing an iPhone, some lights, and Unreal Engine 5 to make this. I am MetaHuman. Before we get into the hows of facial capture and its evolution over the past two decades, let's quickly discuss why this technology is so important for a game's immersion. In 1967, Dr. Paul Eichmann coined the term micro-expressions, which are the small and voluntary expressions we make with our faces when communicating. Whether it's one of the louder emotions such as anger, fear, and joy, or one of the more nuanced feelings like disapproval and boredom, our faces tell a story that we may not realize when speaking. And in the case of art and performance, those involuntary and minute expressions are so important to a game's immersion because they help overcome something called the uncanny valley. In 1970, a professor named Masaru Moore coined the term uncanny valley when researching the reactions people would have when looking at a realistic depiction of a human. He theorized that when we examine a character or an object that hits a certain threshold of realism, we tend to look at it with a sense of uneasiness and in some instances, disgust. If a depiction of a human is extremely unrealistic and cartoony, we tend to empathize with them. But take that same exact character, make them hyper-realistic, and well, you get the point. Okay. Let's compare one of the most emotional scenes from Red Dead Redemption, when John has to come to terms with his impending death, to Red Dead Redemption 2's scene where Arthur has to do the same. John Marston's death scene is well written, blocked, and scored, but it still looks like two 3D models talking to each other compared to Arthur's scene in RDR2. I'm afraid. The micro expressions in Arthur's face not only sell the dialogue, but also show the audience that this is a man who is finally coming to terms with his death. All that subtle and extremely powerful emotion is conveyed within a fraction of a second on screen, elevating this moment from memorable to just downright extraordinary. And that's all thanks in part to the advancements of facial capture technology. These technologies are completely redefining our creative process. Not to be confused with motion capture, which is the process where an actor wears a ping pong ball suit while pantomiming what may happen on screen. Facial capture is the process of shooting an actor's face to capture and recreate the subtle nuances we make when speaking. I don't know. Similar to motion capture, traditional facial capture rigs need to be well lit, involve some sort of trackable markers on face, and can quickly blow a game budget. While similar in concept, it wasn't until recently that it was even possible to get both motion and facial capture done at the same time. Productions needed to undergo a complicated and rather impractical workflow, involving a large set of cameras, rotoscoping, and a separate second shoot with the actor to capture their body movements. It wasn't until the early 2000s that WetaFX was able to improve on performance capture with the technology developed for the Lord of the Rings The Two Towers. While the method they used still required actor Andy Serkis to wear a morph suit to play Gollum effectively and then film his facial capture at another time, the results were uncanny. This technology would go on to evolve into WetaFX's Faceits for the development of Avatar. This is a system that uses facial recognition points and head-mounted cameras alongside motion capture suits to capture an actor's full range of expression, which in turn is displayed in real time on a monitor so a director can direct the scene as if they were shooting on film. In the case of video games, it would take even longer to catch up to movies. This is due to the astronomical cost of using a system like Faceits back in the early 2000s and the technical limitations of video game hardware. A movie has the luxury of spending 48 hours to render a single frame of Gollum. PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox, on the other hand, need to render 30 to 60 frames a second. <laughs> Thankfully, as graphical capabilities evolved over generations, game studios were finally able to dip their toes into proper facial capture. Early examples of video games and facial capture can be traced back to Siren on the PlayStation 2. While it was cutting edge at the time, Siren's use of less sophisticated methods to capture their cast performances was a far cry for the big budget movie set stateside that we would see a few years later in L.A. Noire. 
Siren's developers took multiple photos of each cast member performing different expressions and then used those images to create textures, which were then mapped on a model's faces to convey an expression on screen. While this was a cumbersome and time-consuming process, the results were worth the effort, creating a game that looked well ahead of its time, even if the game was, uh, eh. Uh. Another notable title that utilized early facial capture was Heavenly Sword. While this looked great at the time and helped raise the bar for what to expect in video game performance capture, we wouldn't see any meaningful process in facial capture until Rockstar Games unveiled their latest piece of tech, called Motion Scan. LA Noir is a pivotal moment in the evolution of facial capture technology. Unlike previous attempts by other developers on games such as Heavenly Sword and Heavy Rain, LA Noir took facial capture to its logical next step with Motion Scan. Motion Scan is the process in which developers will have an actor sit in a controlled environment while they film them with 32 separate cameras. Each camera is focused on a separate point of the actor's head and is used to generate an accurate real-time facial scan. This tech made it possible to create the lifelike expressions and performances found in LA Noir. But with all its progress and potential, the drawbacks were pretty severe. To put it bluntly, shooting a game with motion scan was a very expensive and cumbersome process. An actor would need to be able to deliver lines without moving their body too much or else they might confuse the software. The software would then create massive files that would be fed into a render farm to fully utilize the 32 camera setup to create a 3D scan of an actor's face. Technical and cost prohibitors aside, the results from motion scan, while incredible at the time and still look good, never really accounted for character movement. So once again, facial and motion capture would need to be shot separately and then married later. This led to mixed results, and in the case of LNR, an all expenses paid trip to the uncanny valley due to the faces looking incredible, but the bodies attaching those characters' heads, eh, a little less than desirable. Dead! Oh no! She can't be. Unfortunately, LA Noir would be the only major release to utilize motion scan, but that's the price to pay for progress, because a few years later, French studio Quantic Dream released Beyond Two Souls. This game pushed the facial capture envelope further by utilizing an in-house performance capture system developed by the studio. Using 36 Vicon T-Series cameras and 28 MX40 cameras and a specialized new software called Blade, Quantic Dream can capture facial and body motion simultaneously, thus allowing a game studio to finally achieve full performance capture. In layman's terms, they used very expensive cameras to feed a signal into a very expensive application, which then processed lifelike renders of Elliot Page and Willem Dafoe. This technology and its separately owned variations are still used today on countless video games and are one of the main reasons why so many games these days look so cinematic. As time went on, the technology became more obtainable and easier to use. During the pandemic, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War was able to shoot its facial capture at home thanks to affordable camera rigs. We did a whole inside story on that, so you should totally check it out, you know, once you're done with this video. While big sets of multi-million dollar rigs are still preferred by studios in both film and games, at-home solutions that were a pipe dream only a few years ago are becoming more obtainable by the day. What was once something that was only accessible by a studio with a sizable budget can now be done with help from the device you're most likely watching this video on and the tool is used to create many of the games and TV shows we play and watch today. This is where Epic's MetaHuman Animator plugin for Unreal Engine 5 comes in. In a nutshell, MetaHuman Animator takes all the hassle out of character creation and places it in an intuitive and easy to use package. With this app, it's possible to generate a character from scratch and modify every aspect of their being, from the way their face is structured, to the clothes they wear, to the capture of facial expressions with the help of a newer iPhone or head-mounted camera rig. This tool not only saves developers time on facial capture, but also a ton of time building out and animating characters and NPCs. This is possible thanks to MetaHuman Animator being able to take full advantage of the multi-camera and depth mapping capabilities from a newer iPhone or specialized head camera mounted rig. MetaHuman Animator uses the iPhone's front-facing camera's true depth camera system, which uses a blast of infrared light on your face to map out your facial features down to the smallest details. It also uses that same multi-camera array to measure depth and dynamic range in milliseconds. MetaHuman Animator then takes this image and renders out a near-perfect facial capture in real time. From here, a technician can modify the character features instantly and play back what was recorded in mere moments. This is a process that used to take weeks to accomplish and was extremely cost prohibitive. While some systems offered the ability to watch facial capture media in real time, the character models on screen were already rough and typically lacked the micro expressions that would be added later on. Having access to a nearly complete character model on set will only make it easier for a director to get the best possible outcome from their actors to tell the best story, something that was only available to directors with an avatar-sized budget just a few years ago. This technology is still improving. 
Just recently at GDC 2024, Epic announced that their digital humans are not only easier to integrate in games like Fortnite and apps like Autodesk Maya, but also cost around 98 megabytes instead of their previous cost of one gigabyte. This not only saves creators a ton of valuable storage space, but also means that creatives will spend less time getting bogged down by the technical minutia that comes with storytelling. Will this replace the full-blown capture space like Sony's Visual Arts Studio anytime soon? Probably not. But now that studio-quality facial capture can be done with a modest PC and a smartphone, the doors are open to development teams and filmmakers of all sizes. And the possibilities for new artists to express themselves just became even more accessible. Art, like technology, is always evolving. And what was the standard today may not be the case tomorrow. But it's that unstoppable march towards the next big thing that makes technology like Epic's MetaHuman Animator, Motion Scan, and Facets possible. And it's that intersection between technology and art that will always make sure that something new and exciting is just around the corner. You create the narrative. I am MetaHuman. Meta